O'Neill staged a practice match at Oxford in midweek to give Scott Taylor a run out. Taylor rushed back a fortnight ahead of schedule after a knee operation gave his side the lead. And then Ewan Roberts' turn and shot nearly produced a second, but Paul Musselwhite stretched to save. Mike Whitlow's attempted clearance rebounded off the onrushing Tony Naylor and onto the post. But O'Neill was denied his first win since his appointment three days before Christmas when Naylor teed up John McCarthy. Expect now a busy trade at Filbert Street. After Steve Corica's departure, Birmingham striker Steve Claridge, a spectator today, may be signed for 1.2 million. And crew midfielder Neil Lennon is also on the shortlist. But Derby can't have seen after a spell at the top, but Derby are determined to stay on at number one, though they had to come from behind after Andy Thompson put Southend ahead before the break. Derby, though, had had their moments in the first half, but wasted them. The fact that they were getting close, though, meant it was perhaps no great surprise when they got the equaliser ten minutes after the interval. It was certainly what they deserved, even if the build-up was not one of the prettiest. A series of fairly scrappy nine-irons before Paul Simpson had the final touch. That was 1-1, and possibly a result which would have been fair to everyone, except that with just a couple of minutes to go, the South End defence slipped up quite literally and cruelly inside the box and eventually Ron Willems was there to finish it off. Southend ended up with 10 men after a late sending off but Derby stayed top, it finished Southend 1, Derby 2. West Bromwich Albion ended a disastrous sequence last day and eventually a penalty. This decision after 12 minutes followed three rejections on earlier claims. Andy Hunt put Albion ahead. In the second half, Albion's dominance waned and Tranmere were back level. Graham Branch was the scorer of the equaliser. Albion's local rivals Wolves were in East Anglia where new signing Steve Corica set up Steve Bull for a splendidly taken 13th of the season and the first goal of the game against Norwich. But two and a minute from the home side put Wolves behind. Ian Crook equalised and then Darren Eady made it 2-1 to the home side. But another from Bull, this time set up by McGee's other recent signing, Simon Osborne, put Wolves deservedly level. Don Goodman's 18th of the season in the second half after this gave Wolves the points. Norwich also had Andy Johnson sent off. Division 2 action. Fifth round of the FA Cup this weekend, but they more than made up for their heartbreak with a real goal battle, which started when Martin Butler fired Warsaw into the lead. Oxford jumped back in the second half, they won a penalty, and sub Paul Moody, who'd been dropped, showed he can still shoot by smashing home the equaliser. The game swung United's way then, Martin Aldridge gave them the lead, it looked to win. But within seconds, the Saddlers were back, Butler again, what service, to all with ten minutes to go. And then on the whistle, Oxford came up with the...